Hi, folks. My name is Greg Turner, the radiology coach. My job is to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. Whether a patient has an ultrasound, an MRI, a CT, or a general diagnostic x-ray examination, the referring physician or reading radiologists depend on the image quality to accurately interpret the images. The images themselves must be free from foreign artifact obstruction of the body part that is being examined and they should have a reasonable degree of visibility. Two factors that contribute to one's ability to evaluate these images accurately are grayscale and brightness. The grayscale, or contrast, allows practitioners to delineate between anatomical structures and assess anomalies within the bone and tissue. The brightness of a film is consistent with the overall illumination of the image. It can optimize or inhibit the doctor's ability to see structures within the x-ray. Image contrast is relative to grayscale variations. Contrast means difference. Depending on the body parts that are being examined within x-ray, the best grayscale contrast can vary. For bone or osseous tissue, we like to see more of a black and white image so as to kind of set the tissues in the background so that the bone is clearly the center of interest. We refer to this as high contrast image where there is a big difference between the white bone on an x-ray and the black background that includes other tissue. Consequently, a more gray image is desired for soft tissue films like the chest and abdomen. A high contrast, as stated earlier, minimizes our ability to visualize subtle differences in an x-ray, whereas a low contrast that contains many shades in a long scale spectrum allows us to see very small changes within the diagnostic picture. When observing a standard abdominal film that includes a low grayscale contrast, we can see many things, the kidneys, the stomach, the intestines, the bladder. The human eye can see up to a thousand shades of gray, which empowers us to identify these nuances. But even if an image has an appropriate level of grayscale contrast, it can be severely affected if the brightness or density is incorrectly applied. The brightness of an x-ray image allows us to optimally visualize the body parts in large part due to our capability to adjust our eyes to the illumination of the film. If a film is too bright or too dark, we now partially lose the ability to clearly see parts of the film. Historically, in general x-ray, if the grayscale contrast or the brightness were inappropriate, we would have to retake images to achieve the right look. However, today, all x-ray modalities are mostly digital. Now we have the ability to control the grayscale and brightness after our film has been acquired using post-processing tools of the software that we are working with. This gives us added latitude and flexibility in providing optimal films to the physicians. As a practicing radiographer, the x-ray specialist should continually exchange dialogue with their radiologist or practicing physician to determine what levels of grayscale and brightness are the best for them. Different doctors have different preferences when it comes to the look of their images. This can be affected by their background, their training, the computers that they view images on, and even interfacing software connections. So, feedback is essential in achieving turnkey, optimized images in a clinical setting. That concludes this segment on why are grayscales and brightness important. If you like this presentation, please select the subscribe button below this video. You can also tap the bell next to it so that we'll notify you when other great videos have posted. My name is Greg Turner, and I'm the Radiology Coach. And remember, mark my word and mark your films.